to start just by saying that Senator Obama views, views space policy within a larger framework of science policy in general. And Senator Obama is, I think you'll find to be a friend of science and engineering. Uh, he believes that we need to have more evidence-based and, and, and more input from scientists and engineers into decisions that affect science, that affect space, that affect all areas of science and engineering uh, as the federal government uh, moves forward. Uh, his community organizer background, I think, extends to the community of scientists and space scientists and, uh, and, and the people here. NASA and science fit, uh, and space fits within a general framework of how an Obama administration would deal with science. And there, there are, are some general principles that I'd like to lay out. Uh, one is to build and support uh, a strong pool of talented people to ensure the future of United States research in space and in space science. To inspire our young to become the engineers and scientists of tomorrow. Uh, and inspiration takes many forms, and I won't pretend that I can inspire an audience the way that my boss can. My boss hasn't talked much about space, but when he does, he will talk about it in an inspirational way. I think that that's a, a, a very key component of, of what we should look forward to as we move forward. Uh, secondly, the idea of creating a, a supportive environment for scientific research and for space exploration, uh, for both research and development in both the public and private sectors, uh, including a new generation of, of entrepreneurs who, who are interested in space exploration. Uh, and thirdly, within this general framework of science policy is to to apply science, engineering, and technology to solve some of the nations and the world's most urgent challenges. And I, I guess you've heard some about uh, climate change here and, and the role that uh, space exploration and, and space vehicles can play there. And also the idea of linking human and robotic exploration more clearly, more closely to the needs of our planet, such as climate change, such as energy. And the fourth aspect of Obama administration science policy would be to provide really unadulterated expert scientific advice to the federal government. That is to be evidence-based and to lead, uh, to allow science to be an important part, scientific evidence to be an important part of how decisions are made. You're an educator. You see kids in the classroom. It's very hard to connect those dots and say, you know, going to Mars is going to inspire an entire generation uh, of kids who may pursue careers who may join that uh, effort, and who knows how many spin-offs that, lead, that leads to. How can we possibly predict what Apollo meant for this country in so many dimensions? Uh, is there any doubt in your mind that that is the case? I don't know if this is a correction, but I'd like to remind you that we're actually on Mars. We've been on Mars for four days. And I think there's some amazing pictures that are coming back from Mars. And I, and I think that for many, of the pe many people of my generation, we think of inspiration as a person being on a planet. I think there's a huge amount of inspiration from the pictures that we've seen this past week of a parachute, a heat shield, and a lander on the surface of another planet. I think that inspiration, we, we shouldn't limit what inspires us to just exploration by humans, exploration by robots. It can also be tremendously inspiration. I was a high school science teacher before I came to this. And, you know, for my kids, they were interested in space exploration, not because Apollo astronauts had been there landing their. 40 years ago, 48 years ago. Yeah, but, but there are, the, but there are the high schools named after robots, aren't there? Pardon? There are high schools named after robots, aren't there? <laughs> but they are in high schools building robots. They are in high schools using on activity and uh, computer excellence and using those sorts of things in a way that I think people of our generation maybe discount because we don't understand it as well as the next generation does. I think it's important, and my boss thinks it's important, to have a balance between robotic exploration and human exploration, and to not discount the fact that we are now on Mars. We have been there for four days. For my high school students, it might be more inspiring if we built ways for them to connect to probes on Mars that they could actually interact with in real time. <laughs> we shouldn't limit our view of inspiration to what inspires us. I think other people may be inspired, and other generations may be inspired in other ways. I'm not inspired by Second Life, but a lot of kids are. What should the priorities be? What, what's number one on the list? Is it all about human spaceflight? Is it about sending robots? Is it about, I mean, there's all these trade-offs that go on all the time inside the agency, and we've, we've been witnessing those right now through the course of the Bush administration as they've tried to pay for this, this 
a new uh, campaign to go to the moon and ultimately on Mars. Um, how do you make those trade-offs? What are the priorities? And I think that that's a decision based upon what the priorities are based upon input from scientists. And, uh, boy, boy, that would be a food fight. It has been, but the food fight changes as the budget increases. You're assuming a flat budget, but we're not. The role of the government here is just to try to seed some innovation to try to help commercial enterprises to, to stay out of the way, but to, to use them when they're valuable and to help them figure out the, through expertise and then some funding how to become more innovative and how to solve some of the problems that we can solve together. The, the Moon Mars mission. Delay it and pour that money into education, which to me uh, seemed like a counterproductive um, way to go about it. Whereas when it is my firm belief, I think a lot of people in this room would agree that this is this is about education in many ways. Um, has the campaign changed its stance on that, or is that still the, the, the feeling? The, the statement was uh, part of the education platform that one of the ways to pay for early education was to uh, delay development of constellation. And Senator Obama has come out and said that overall, he believes that science funding nationally needs to double, and that includes an increase in NASA funding. I think that uh, how, how much would that NASA funding increase in the Obama administration? I think that again, I, I think that within the general context of uh, an overall doubling in, in the science budget, I don't know the, the details. So double NASA funding for, for specifically say thirty-four million or so. <laughs> <laughs> to listen to the space and the science community about this. I don't know that, that, that a clear decision has been made, but I know that that's something that's been discussed. And, and, and what this speaks to here is big goals with, with a less than a shoestring budget. Uh, would you agree with that, Steve? The National Research Council has said that the NASA is being asked to accomplish too much with too, too little, and that, that's been true for a long time. Uh, the rallying cry, I, I think, for, for NASA now is that we will go as we can afford to pay. That's not exactly an inspirational message. I think that that's something that my boss would like to look at and decide exactly how to do this. How, how does Senator Obama view space on the high ground? Is, is it a strategic asset? Is it American turf? Uh, is it something that is a place for nations to meet and cooperate? Is the turf find ways to foster cooperation? I mean, we're trying to do the same thing. And again, we don't need any better ones. I mean, you asked whether this is frivolous, whether space exploration is frivolous, and with people dying around. And, and I'm old enough to remember when we landed on the moon, the, the first moon landing was incredibly exciting and incredibly inspirational. And then I remember we had these same discussions about are we spending money going to the moon or we should be spending money on poverty here in the United States. And I know that my boss has gotten a lot of flack for this statement that we should think about how we're spending some of this money and maybe redirect some of it towards education. And I think the part of the basis for, for maybe that decision or, or, or that statement from the campaign was the idea that if we inspire people, if we inspire people through NASA, through manned exploration, through robotic exploration, through other ends for science, we have to give people the opportunities to achieve those goals. It can't be a false promise. We can't say, become a scientist. Go to school and become a scientist. If a lot of the kids can't go to schools where they can take science classes. I had a terrific opportunity to go to school and learn science and earn a PhD and be in the position that I'm in now. Partly, you know, largely by luck, partly by where I grew up. My boss would like those opportunities to be expanded to more kids. He would like to see more people become involved in the scientific enterprise. He would like to see NASA funded at a higher level to inspire people. But he also would not like to see things that are happening now under this current administration, current budget, where people are being laid off at Fermi Lab, people are being laid off at Argonne, the scientific enterprise is being cut back dramatically. So is this an action item? I think it's part of an action item about how do we inspire people? How do we support science? How do we support innovation in the United States? So yes, that is an action item. Science advisors in the Obama administration. Would, would the science advisor get something to add? seat at the table, so to speak. Uh, that's the discussion that is being undertaken now, and the answer is uh, the science advisor would not be in the room for the time. All science would be important, would have an important part of the decision making process for decisions that need input based on evidence, based on interpretation of evidence, accurate interpretation of evidence.